for this little bit, Peter, if that's all right. Ouch. A place where budding entrepreneurs are given a once-in-a-lifetime chance. You have this most bizarre way of answering questions. <laughs> I don't want to hear that one. Stop it. To present their wares to five captains of commerce. You wanted to see how credible we are. Yeah. So I'm about to show you. Well, show me. Some will succeed and go on to make millions. Others will fail and leave with nothing. Make him a counter offer. Tell him to shove it where the sun doesn't shine. The hunt is on to find the next big money-making idea. Dragons are go. <laughs> Tonight. My name's Emma Greed. I am an entrepreneur and I'm from East London. The Dragons have a special guest. Emma, welcome. So happy to be here. It's a bit major, isn't it? I'm the CEO and founder of Good American with my business partner, Chloe Kardashian. On our first day of business, we sold a million dollars worth of jeans and that was an incredible start to what I knew would be an amazing journey. I'm also the founding partner of Skims alongside Kim Kardashian. That business is valued at $3.2 billion. Real gold? Oh, come on. It was a really proud moment for me to make the Forbes richest self-made women list. Underline, self-made. So did you manifest becoming a dragon? 100% I did. By being on Dragon's Den, the opportunity for me is actually really about paying it forward. It's gutting when they walk out with nothing, though. And that's what I love about this show. The idea that just the spark of imagination and the right investor can come together and completely change the trajectory of your entire life. You're going to breathe some fire. Oh, yes. My name is Titi Bello. I'm 45 years old. I'm from Hertfordshire. And I love everything fashion, beauty, wellness. Hair product for Afro hair. I invested in a product specifically for Afro hair a few you years ago. did? Yeah. I've got a great one, Bread. She's killing it. I might get in this business then. Could always have another one. You might have competition today then. Mm-hmm. We'll see about that. <laughs> I have a dragon in mind. I learned that this season Emma Creed is going to be there. She is the ultimate BB. It would be insane if she came on board. But will the dragons feel the same synergies with their new partner? Emma, it can get a little hot in here. How are you feeling? Let's have it. Hello, dragons. My name is Titi Bello. I am the founder of Uri Lifestyle. Uri Lifestyle is a hair care and education brand. I'm hoping to raise 60,000 for 15% equity in my business. I started um, the brand because I suffered from significant hair loss as a result of my over-reliance on weaves, extensions and braids. At that point, I immersed myself in learning how to care for Afro-textured hair. I transformed my hair, and that led to hair coaching services, which helped other women to transform their hair too. I'm currently stocked in Selfridges Online and in Harrods. I want the investment to significantly improve on my marketing channels. I also want to build a hair um, education app. Thank you for listening. And if you'd like to try some of the products, they're under your chair. Ooh. Oh, lovely. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Your hair looks great, by the way. Your hair looks great, <laughs> thank goodness. <laughs> a range of Afro Texture hair products and future plans for a hair education app is the proposition from Hertfordshire-based Titi Bailo. In your hand, you've got um, the leave-in conditioner. There's also a spritz to just infuse your hair with a bit of conditioning and moisture. For £60,000, Titi's offering a 15% share of her company. There's a hair oil. Oh, I love an oil. It's got broccoli seed oil, so it really keeps a frizz at bay. Preferred dragon, Emma Greed, is first to kick things off. 
I feel like you're right on time in terms of this product category because there's such a movement towards natural hair, especially in this, like for this demographic. But I wonder what you think really sets you apart because we know there's massive saturation in this market. So what's your USP? Okay, um, one of my USPs is that the product is unique, but also we focus more on educating our customer base and our client base and take them on a journey of really caring for their hair. So I think the education piece is very strong because I started off as a hair coach. I also know that the five new products that I'm going to launch this year, at least two of them, nothing like that on the market. I love that. So can you tell me a little bit about the price and positioning? You mentioned that you were in Selfridges and Harrods, so I'm guessing that this is a pretty premium product. It's, a, it's I love to call it affordable premium. Um, the most expensive products that I sell is the uh, Kalila oil at 36 pounds and the leave-in conditioner at 32 pounds. It's premium, all right, right? Yes. Titi, um, can you give me an idea of the, the sort of growth? When did you start this business? I started, uh, launched in December 2019. And can you give me an idea of the growth profile since then in terms of revenue and net profit? In our first year, we turned over 47,000. Gross profit, 25,000. The net was 6,500. In our second year, we turned over 72,000. The gross, 30,000. And net was 2,500. Our third year, we turned around 52,000. Gross was 40 and the net was 7,500. When I, when I look at this business, Titi, um, I think over the last three years, you've generated about 15K in net profit. Yes, that's true. Um, you're asking me today to invest 60,000 pounds. Logically, you understand that I'm gonna try and get a return on that 60,000 pounds, a significant one, maybe you know five times or something like that. So what's the thinking behind this hair education app? Because the, the core business hasn't reached a certain scale where I think that would be a good distraction for the business. So what's your thinking around launching an app which will cost a ton of money and also a ton of sort of founder headspace? Um, the, the thinking is that if I have an app, it is a way to advertise the products globally. The app is going to be free on entry. So people that want to build hair care routines for themselves, who want product recommendation, will be able to get tailor-made support for that. Why an app? I would think that education of the problem and how you're solving it is your marketing for the product. So to put that, in the app store behind a download button, I actually think will hurt your business's chance of growth. What I think you should do is take all that education content that you're planning on putting in the app and post it for free on social media. And that's the front door into people realizing not just the sort of re relating to the problem, but then positioning you as the solution to the problem. That's the thing where you have an opportunity. And that is something you should be giving away for free. If you do that, your customer acquisition comes down, your retention goes up, and this business can stand alone because we believe in you and you're telling me that this is the solution. And so I think if you focus on not putting your education behind a download wall, that is how this business grows. But until then, I don't think we, you have an investable business, so I'm gonna say that I'm out. Thank you. Can I just talk margins with you? Because margins matter in a business. So, at the moment, what happened in your margins is you were running at about a 50-ish percent margin for a couple of years. Then you had quite a big increase in your margin. So, so what happened there? Why did your margin increase? Um, heavily invested in products. Um, that's, not, that's not why your margin... So your margin is your cost of your product versus what you're selling the product for. So, so that's what I'm talking about. What happened to your cost of sales that suddenly your margin leapt up? Is that figure right? £52,000 worth of sales, £40,000 gross profit. Because before, it was, your gross profit was much lower as a, as a percentage. Sorry, I've, I've just got uh, Have it. you gone blank? <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, take a minute. <laughs> um, I think you've, 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 you've picked me up on something that I... Uh, is not your strong point. Are the, are the 2022 numbers correct? 
pounds worth of sales. Gross profit was 40. Yes. Are those numbers correct? The, the numbers are correct. So what Deborah's asking when she's asking the margin question, was there something in your cost of goods that went down so that you could make that much money? Was there anything that happened there? Did you start to get the cost of the product down? Um, the cost of two products um, that were launched went down because the because we moved to a supplier. So that's it. That's exactly it there. That's what she's asking you. And I get it. I'm super, super dyslexic, right? I really find it tough to get my head around the numbers. So I understand perhaps not being the financial whiz. I love the way Deborah sits here banging out all the numbers. I have to do like a whole calculation on my page like I was in primary school. So I get it. But you do need to have a really firm grip of those numbers. Yeah. And also you need to be able to have that from the get go. Go on, Deborah. No, I'm done. So, Titi, how do we get this business up and running? You should be getting this product out there and target Afro salons who are specialists in taking care of Afro hair. Forget Harrods, forget Selfridges, because that's a, a small proportion. How many Afro salons are there in the UK? There are, there are quite a few. Right, so the first step you need to go out to those Afro salons and teach those hairdressers face on and say, this is what my product does. Use it and sell it. You're absolutely right. I am in one. Right. Well, not enough. But, no, but it's not enough. Yes. I want you to get out there and visit those stores. Get people talking about you, telling their friends. That's your next step. But unfortunately, the numbers today show me that it's not investable. And for that reason, I'm out. Thank you. Tiddy. So I think the best piece of advice you've been given today is actually how to go and reach that community. I think Tuka had a great point of get out to the salons and if your product is as good as you say it is, they will want to stock that on their shelves because that will help their customers. I don't feel like it's an investment for me today, so I'm out. Titi, I think, I think you brought out a really... You've got a, a really great product, but the, the problem with this is that you came in really clearly. You were very, very clear with regards to what I'm going to do and what I want, and you said you're going to build an education app. But it's like the horse before the cart. You haven't actually built the brand or the community yet, so all of your effort should be going into the products that you've created, getting the messaging out there, and put all of that effort behind that to build a business before you even start thinking of an app. Because at the moment, you've not proved that this market is there for you. So I think you need to focus on what you've got and grow from there. And I think when you do that, I think you're going to build yourself a business, but it's not investable today for the size of that opportunity for me. So for that reason, I'm out. Okay. I'm saying good luck. All right. How are you feeling, love? Uh, fine, thank you. All right. I know, I know it's a lot. I can feel it. Um, I can definitely feel it. You know, there's definitely a couple of issues that you've got here, right? I think that you've been in business for quite a few years now. And when we look at your numbers, there's something about the brand that just isn't tracking. I think that you perhaps need to look at the price of this product. That, that's a barrier to entry. It really, really is. And then you're asking them to download an app. You're creating a barrier to entry. You've already got a barrier to entry, your price. You don't need to create more barriers for us to get into your product. You just want a customer to buy. From my view, a couple of the signs of a good entrepreneur is learning fast, pivoting even faster. Are you willing to actually take the advice from this group of people here Focus on your product range, not look to the app, and just focus in on what it is that you do really well. A absolutely. I came here because I want this business to win, and there is no way that I'm going to dismiss advice from the dragons around how, uh, especially when I've been convinced about your, the points that you've made. Right answer, Titi. That's exactly what I wanted you to say, like 100% hands down. All right, so I'm going to give you an offer, actually. 
So you came in, <laughs> deep breath. <laughs> You asked for 60 grand for 15% of your business. Is that right? Yes. OK, so I'm willing to give you the 60, but I want 25%. Do you want a moment to have a little thing? I'll take it. <laughs> Without hesitation, Titi takes the offer and Emma Greed bags a deal on her Den debut but it's left someone feeling a little excluded. Oh. Deborah's not out. No, 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 no. No, you've got it, you've got no, it. No, no, no. Oh, well, you know, so I'll... It's your reaction. I'm sorry. I'm oh. sorry, Nate. I'm guessing sorry, I might not have went, I might not have. Do you know what? I'm absolutely delighted. I wasn't actually going to make an offer anyway, but you did close one of your options, Dan, but it's brilliant. Well Thank done. You. Well Thank done. You. A triumphant TT departs the den with £60,000 and the backing of her dream dragon. Oh, I can't believe it! Oh, my God! I'm really happy that it's Emma. I'm so happy for her. Do you see that her reaction? Was do you see her reaction? It was just awesome. <laughs> Well, I saw her reaction because she didn't even bother negotiating. <laughs> but Deborah, you... Sorry, you got, Deborah. I didn't want it anyway. <laughs> Your first deal, Emma. First deal first in deal. the day. <sighs> they made these photos all terrifying. Stephen's smizing. They're yeah, all smizing, actually. They're all smizing. Oh, I'm Tuka, looks like he's about to beat me up. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sam, I'm 29 and I'm from London. I'm Charlie, I'm 30 and I'm also from London. I'm feeling pretty excited, uh, looking around and being in the den is, is pretty surreal. Thank God, I'm starving. It smells all right. It looks like mince, it looks like vegan mince or something. Because you look at where it's used, toast, jacket potato. Toast? Toast with mince? I'm not coming round yours for dinner. <laughs> not invited. <laughs> At that point, you stick your tongue out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't want you to come round anyway. Yeah. Hi, I'm Charlie, and I'm Sam, and we're the founders of Stocked. We make revolutionary meals for modern lives, and we're here today asking for fifty thousand pounds in return for two percent of our business. So, what are we? Sorry, two percent. Yes, that's right. You may as well stay in bed. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do we mean by modern lives? Well, maybe you're a busy parent on the school run after a long day of work. Or you're a dragon at the top of your game, listening to two mates pitch you your next big investment. Either way, we all have less and less time to shop for and cook the meals that we love. We've all opened up our freezers to see Ziploc bags filled with God knows what, buried under a pile of freezer burnt fish fingers. Wouldn't it be great to fill it with useful food that you actually want to eat? We make high-quality, chef-cooked, award-winning meals with a difference. They're frozen into handy little blocks. That's right. <coughs> blocks. These blocks can be transformed back into delicious dishes in under four minutes, with portion size controlled by you every single time. So an investment today would allow us to expand our growing website channel and to create a retail-specific product. We'd love you to join our frozen food revolution and get freezers around the country stocked. A range of premium mealtime fillings, frozen into block-shaped portions for reheating, is the offering from Sam Moss and Charlie Gilpin. So we've got some samples for you to try, and we didn't want to have frozen food melting away under your chairs, so under there you've got some example packaging. The pair are seeking £50,000. You've just given us wooden blocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did say they didn't want melting food on the floor, so he said it was example packaging. He didn't tell us that. <laughs> this is not a con. There's, yeah. there's actually food in the packs that we sell to customers. I was going to ask about your customer return rate. <laughs> <laughs> on offer is 2% of their company. That chilli is pretty lovely, I'm not going to lie. The convenience of the culinary creation is resonating with mum of two, Sarah Davies. You described my life perfectly. I am that busy mum on the school run and busy dragoning. 
and I have uh, freezer burnt fish fingers in my freezer. Yeah. And honestly, I, now you say it, it seems so obvious that it would be such a great idea from a portion control perspective. And you just look at one of the things and think, why has no one ever thought about it before? Yeah, there's two things at play there. There's the portion control element, but there's also, you know, being able to choose how you serve it every time. You get so much more value out of the chili con carne if you can put it with rice one day or just put it on top of nachos when you've got people coming around. So that versatility is also, you know, really key to the blocks. So, you've got a really punchy valuation. Yeah. So I'm going to guess you're going to tell us you're making millions. So I'm dying to hear about all of that. Um, so in our first year, we've generated a revenue of seventy-one thousand pounds. Seventy-one grand. And then eight thousand gross, mm -hmm. and a net loss of one hundred sixteen thousand pounds. Year two. That is a revenue of um, two hundred eighty thousand pounds. Two hundred eighty. Um, a gross margin of forty-seven thousand mm pounds, -hmm. and a net loss of two hundred forty-two thousand pounds. Two hundred forty-two. Wow. Yeah. And at what point do you envisage you'll become profitable? So we plan to uh, turn a profit in our fourth year. So you might as well give us the projection in the next couple of years and so I can see what that looks like. Yep. So here goes. <laughs> so in um, year three, a million pounds revenue, 260,000 um, gross, uh, with a net loss of um, 440,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. year, in year four, we uh, plan to sell... <laughs> <laughs> I've got a printing that, machine. That's 800k loss so far. Yeah. Yeah. So year four um, is generating revenues of 3.4 um, million um, and a gross profit of um, 1.2 million and a net profit of 120k. Guys, you, you can't not pick up on the fact that the numbers you've just given and your forecast you're doing a revenue of 1 million and 260k. So you're, you're averaging 25, 26% gross margin. Mm -hmm. But the forecast in your final year, which is year four, all of a sudden your margin really grows immeasurably. It goes to like 33%. Yeah. So, Why is that? So we have been making pretty big margin gains since we launched. And just this week, we actually hit 30% on our, on our product margin but we're still not at a point where we've reached peak efficiency at all doing what we're doing now. Um, so part of this investment is actually to invest in machinery in our kitchens and the development of a, a future retail product. What will you get your margin up to percentage-wise? We aim to get our margin to 40%. 40%? Yeah. You still can't do retail? Yeah. Do you know what? I do not currently have a brand or product in retail that doesn't make 70% gross margin. That's, that's very impressive numbers. And well, that's what you have to get to if you're going to attack the retail marketplace. I, I think we're here to, to show that we plan to get that margin higher. We, we can't go into retail with this product here. Um, this is what we have now. It's be a similar format, but it will be something that does have the margins that you are talking about. Well, what about. is your margin indication for the retail product? The reason we haven't put that into mod our modelling yet is because we don't have all of the unit economics we wanted to put that so into. So you that. don't know? We don't know. We don't know the full extent of it, no. Honestly, if I play this back to you, we've got a very low margin product that really isn't working for us, so we're now looking to go into retail. The only thing I needed to hear from you today, because all of the rest you've got, is we believe that we can get our margin to... Sure. Mm -hmm. So it kind of leaves me with, I'm not able to invest, which is a really frustrating feeling. Mm -hmm. So, I'm afraid I'm out. OK, thank you. Appreciate that, Deborah. Guys, and can I ask, what have you invested so far to get the business to this point? Yeah, so, you know, we, we have raised investment already. We've raised two rounds, one from friends and family, so we raised 121,000. And then in January this year, we closed out a round of 560,000 from um, Angels. And that's enabled us to really scale up our digital marketing efforts. We are mainly online, so um, you know a, a lot of investment does need to go into digital marketing for us to hit the scale um, that, that we start making um, a decent profit. Just explain this piece to me just yeah. a little bit. I need to understand your logic as founders. Mm -hmm. How much, as a percentage of your revenue, are you spending on digital marketing right now? We're spending about a, a third of our revenue. A third, on which means marketing. you have, a, that's an extremely high amount going in to digital marketing, mm -hmm. extremely high. And now you're asking us for 50 grand to figure out this new retail focused product. Mm -hmm. Yet you're spending half a million that you've raised on acquiring digital customers. 
I just don't understand that logic whatsoever. I think what we also wanted to do with the D2C channel is build the brand and to go into major retail with a product like this that's so different without having a strong brand that we've built through. But you're doing it at an exceptionally high cost. Yeah. Didn't make any sense to me. Charlie and Sam, um, look, my advice to you is cut back totally on your marketing spend and get this business in a stabilising position where you're not burning as much cash. But I wish you all the best, guys, but today I'm not parting with my money, so I'm out. I mean, sitting here as a consumer, I believe the market could go this direction. My concern is I believe you're going to be a, a casualty in that journey. You're going to be the company that pioneered this, but that ran out of cash before they managed to make it there. So I'm really sorry, but I'm out. Thank you so much. Appreciate Thanks, it. Guys, look, it's only one thing I can see that's wrong with this. It, it only comes down to margin. The margin that you've demonstrated isn't there to roll out the strategy that you've offered. So for that reason, I'm out. Charlie and Sam, I think I've got good news and bad news. The good news is you two are amazing. Life is extremely long and you are going to have an exceptional, exceptional business. The bad news is this ain't it. And I can tell you that I am, I'm your, I am your target customer. I'm a mother of four, I love to cook, I have no time. And even for me, I can just see so many pitfalls in this. You might figure out the kinks, but you ain't gonna do it with my money. So for those reasons, I'm out. Sam and Charlie, you've got, um, you've got a lot of problems in your business. I think that's okay. I think dragons invest in businesses where there is a tall mountain to climb. Mm -hmm. um, and there is a lot of risk. But the question becomes for a dragon, is the height of the mountain, does it match the aptitude of the climbers? And, and quite honestly, I think it does. I think it does. The valuation is crazy. But, you know, I'm the fair dragon, so I, <laughs> I understand that valuations are what they are. But it is, it is a bit bonkers. Um... <laughs> Sorry. He just said fair, that was all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the funny thing. <sighs> There's a lot of ways I can help. So I'm going to make you an offer. I'm going to offer you... all of the money for 6% of the business. Thank you so much, Stephen. Really, really appreciate, appreciate that. that. We're going to need a minute. <laughs> <laughs> that wall's calling. All right. After five dragons declare themselves out, the entrepreneurs are offered a lifeline by Stephen Bartlett. Sorry. You are the fair dragon. Thank you. In fact, I would say that was... It's soft. Maybe it's generous. <laughs> but a triple the equity that was originally on the table. I think you'd be amazing. I think we'll go back and ask for five. Should we do? I think go back and ask for five. Nice. Okay. Will the foodie friends cut a better deal or walk away? Um, thank you again, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Would you consider meeting us at five and, and shake hands there? <laughs> I've got to be honest, um, I got roasted by my fellow <laughs> dragons for even offering you that. And I look at the journey this has to go on, and I can't move on the, on the 6%, unfortunately. And I think, like, as I said, that is a fair offer from a fair dragon, so... Well, in that case, we'd love to accept your Thank offer. you. <laughs> Charlie's done. Thank you so much. Really well appreciate well it. Well Thank well you. Done. Charlie and Sam have done it. Thank you, guys. Really, really appreciate being here. See you See later. later. Bye. Guys, well done. Cheers. Thank Thanks, You've got a great dragon. A fair one. A fair one, apparently. Unbelievably <laughs> fair. Soft one. They depart with £50,000 and the backing of a dragon who can help make their food business 
a recipe for success. Come here. <laughs> oh my God. That was tough. That was tough. That was real tough, but tough on the things we knew it'd be tough on. Yeah. But really tough on them. Yeah. I mean, relieved. Uh, Stephen definitely threw us a lifeline there, to be honest. It was uh, pretty brutal. Yeah, I feel you know, obviously over the moon um, to have Stephen on board, but very relieved that that's over. And I hope I didn't just invest in this. <laughs> <laughs> you have got one long term view there, though. That is not happening quickly. Good thing I'm young, eh? There you go. <laughs> Look at that there. Hi, I'm Will. I'm 39 years old from York. The facts and figures, you know, I feel like I know them, but I'm very worried that somebody will throw a left field figure at me, you know, what's the hyperbolic, you know, margin on that? And I'll think, what a hyperbolic margin? What the heck is that? And then I'll get, come unstuck, but uh, fingers crossed. Well, that is an interesting way to draw attention to your asthma inhaler. <laughs> With the Mona Lisa, I love it. That is nuts. I'm Will, founder of The Inhaler Taylor. I'm looking for £80,000 for a 10% share of my business. I've had to carry one of these my whole life, a metered dose inhaler. As a kid, I just thought of it as a scary medical device and I'd really kick up a stink every time I was meant to be taking it. Not sure if you've noticed, but films and TV shows still often portray people that need to use one of these as slightly weedy or nerdy, and it really frustrates me. So I invented these. Cases for me to dose inhalers. They are completely reusable, so the inhaler goes inside. When you get a new inhaler, you simply take it off, switch it over. They have a mouthpiece cap holder, so this bit stretches off. Then you use your inhaler exactly as prescribed. Together, I'm sure we can help millions of the over half a billion people around the world that have a chronic respiratory condition feel a little bit less like this and a little bit more like this. Yeah, I've got asthma. Deal with it. On a mission to make inhalers cool, is Will Hogg. There you go, yours is very classy. It matches your suit as well. It does. He's offering a 10% share in his company. I've got a leopard print, darling. Oh, hello. Oh. I'll have a leopard print. Mm. I'll take a leopard this, print. This one's actually got that's some real gold. That's the one for me. This real is gold. gold. Sterling oh, silver. come on. Yeah. Like, that's you go, you what go. I, I can't like give a bit of that. One, that looks cheeky deeky to me. In return for £80,000. It's time for Deborah Meaden to start the interrogation. So I actually had childhood asthma. I carried one of these, never used it. Carrying it was enough for me to stop panicking and get control of it, yeah. but I know, yeah. um, I do, I understand the issue. It's interesting, I never used it. Maybe I didn't want to in front yeah. of other people, I don't know. Okay, so you've, you've, um, you're trying to do for asthma, inhal asthma inhalers what uh, Apple have done for the phone cases, I guess. Exactly right, <laughs> hopefully I'll be a successful. I can see it being more than a trillion dollars business, you know, in a few years. Right, let's find out then. Um, are you selling them already? Yes, I am. Yeah, I've sold 6,000 units so far. Uh, which is what in terms of revenue? 90,000 in revenue. OK. And where are you selling them? Purely online. So I have my own website. Uh, I sell through Etsy and also through TikTok. And what's your major platform, is it? It's about 50% my own website and then 25 Etsy, 25 TikTok. TikTok is rapidly accelerating. I love the fact that you've got 25% of your sales coming through TikTok. What does that content look like? Yes. Well, I put one video on TikTok. I've only got one video on TikTok so far. Um, a bit over 3 million views, uh, 300,000 likes. So you've got 3 million views on one TikTok? You've one video, yeah. And sales just came out of that? And sales just went, yeah, it just went crazy from then. 
Yeah. So if you had Major. one that did that, why wouldn't you make a second one? Because I make them all by hand myself. So I've been making uh, 150 a day for the last two oh, months God. since <laughs> I put that video on TikTok. <laughs> Listen, it's hard to replicate success on TikTok as well. Speak for yourself. Oh, all right, babe. All right, babe. <laughs> I've had one or two successes on TikTok. <laughs> so can I ask, how much do they sell for? £12.74. OK, and how many designs have you got of these? 70 different designs. Whoa! And how much stock have you got that leads me straight into? So I manufacture everything myself, so mm -hmm. I can roll out just a few hundred of each designs very inexpensively. So, Will, don't get me wrong, I think it's great that you're making these yourself, but it'll drive you crazy if you had an order for 10,000. If you're going to go into retail, and you go into Boots and Boots says, right, I want 5,000. Uh, how do you cope? There's two ways of doing it. I can build up stock in the UK. Right. I am also looking at a partner in Asia. But the feel of the product is so important to me, the materials that it's made from. Um, the, the, it's a vegan leather uh, from Italy. So how much are you paying for the raw fabric? About six, seven euros? Uh, it's about 75 pounds a metre. How much? 75 pounds a metre. Right there. Well, I'm in the fabric business, right? I make jeans and I make underwear, so I really know something about fabric. One thing I would say to you is that an important thing to do early on is, like, kill your darlings. You might love this fabric. You have to think about the customer, right? Customer first, always. And when he or she puts their hand in their pocket, she ain't thinking about the cost of this being some lovely, like, vegan leather for a minute. She's yeah. just not. So it's like, get the cost down and you'll kill it. It's not a business for me, but I think you'll do really well and you'll make a nice living and you'll set out to do exactly what you said you were going to do, which is take all the stigma away for this. And for that, I really commend you. But this is not for me. I'm out. Well, I have to tell you, so I agree <laughs> and completely disagree with Emma. You're in a market that is very concerned about the environment because of their breathing difficulties. Mm but you need to get yourself off that manufacturing line and get yourself out there talking about it as fast as possible. And, and I presume that isn't a difficult thing to do as long as you get the time to do it. So I, I, it feels to me like you probably need to give yourself a moment to think about how you can set yourself up so you can set yourself free to do the thing that's really going to make a difference to this business, which is you getting out there and actually marketing it. And you're going to do it but I don't see the big, huge vision for an investor. So I'm afraid. Well, I'm not afraid I'm out, actually. I'm glad I'm out, because in these circumstances, I reckon you don't need me. You're going to do it. I'm out. Thank you. Can I also say, you and I stand here as an example of people on television who are not wet and weedy. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, right. exactly. Just done it. Yeah, right. Like David yeah. Beckham, Harry Styles, there's so many celebs out there. There you That's go. Nobody knows about <laughs> it. <laughs> Will, I think you, you've proven to me, you've actually, to be honest, you've educated me on um, a, a category and a stigmatization of a medical product that I wasn't fully aware of. But as I sit here as an investor, I, I wonder the lever that I'm going to be able to pull for you. Um, to accelerate that to a point where we're both going to make a really great return. And I have to be honest, I can't, I can't, I can't quite see it. So I'm going to say that I'm out, but I wish you the very best. OK, thank you. Will, you know, I, I can totally buy into your mission of mm. what you're trying to achieve. Mm. That would, that would float my boat. But does that make me excited enough mm -hmm. so that when I'm getting up on a morning and looking at my massive portfolio of businesses that I'm involved with, and I think, what am I excited to go and work on today? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that this is something that would get me out of bed on the morning. So it's not an investment for me today, and I'm out. Will, um, look, I, I think you have, you've created a great product. What other inhaler products, the inhaler tailor, does that mean that there's another range of product or is it purely just a one hit wonder product? It's, I don't feel like, it, I wouldn't describe it as a one hit wonder. I think strategic focus is really important on this. 
would it be better to create an overarching medical, you know, beautification of medical products brand? I don't think that would be the best way to do it from business perspective. For me, I would rather focus on this. I think until there's an overarching vision that takes you into something potentially different, then I'm struggling to see why an investor would come in and back this business. It, it's tough to get excited about. So for that reason, I'm going to say that I'm out. Good to meet you, thank you. Well, what have you learned today? Um, that I can do it on my own, probably, um, and that I just need to sort out the manufacturing, uh, hand it off to somebody else, uh, focus on the marketing, and just push the business, go all in. So you don't really need me, do you? Well, do I? I want you, though. <laughs> <laughs> he loves you, Tuka. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you straight. When I looked at this, it's the most simplest thing to make. And I looked at your turnover and I thought, there isn't a lot in it. Then I look at what you're asking for, 80,000 pounds. So you're valuing this business at 800,000. If you had 800,000 pound cash today, would you buy this business? Honestly. Uh, uh, knowing what I know, I, I would. I'd probably negotiate it a little bit. I'd want more than 50% if I negotiate it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, unfortunately, your ask is too big, your valuation is too big. For that reason, I'm out. But if you want some help on the sourcing, you can contact me. Perfect. Thank you. That's amazing. Well, well done. done. Thank you very Good much. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Pleasure to meet you all. Thank Cheers, you. Good luck. Bye. Okay. Tuka Suleiman's offer of help softens the blow of six no's in a row and will depart without investment. It's gutting when they walk out with nothing, no? I can't take it. Oh, he's fine. Oh, I feel so He's bad. fine. Oh. He is going to have a good business. You can't business. have felt that bad, otherwise you'd have given the guy 80 grand. No, I ain't giving him money. That's my money. <laughs> <laughs> it's disappointing not to get a dragon on board. It feels like it'd be good fun to have somebody like that to work on the product with. But, you know, the fact that they were so positive about it is, of course, like, really reassuring. I think the last time we did a walk like this was our wedding day. Oh, God. <laughs> and then you ran off. I, well, <laughs> there's no escape now, yeah. I'm Denise, I'm 38. And I'm Kieran. I'm 44. And we're from Dublin, Ireland. And we really believe we can be the Nike of mental wellness. Manifestation journals. Looks like it. It's a diary of some sort. You're in this uh, business, Stephen. You should be able to tell us about this. What are you in? What business are you in? You ever heard of the Diary of CEO, mate? What's that? Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're happily married. I hope Karen will agree. <laughs> Although we did just have a baby a few weeks ago, so we're both a little sleep deprived. But yeah, we're co-founders of this business together and it's been an amazing journey. Oh, okay. I'm into a bit of gratitude. Every really? day, every day while I brush my teeth. You manifest. Right? Every single day. Yeah. So did you manifest becoming a dragon? 100% I did. Hello, dragons. I'm Denise. And I'm Kieran, And we're the founders of The Head Plan, a personal development and wellness brand that's on a mission to empower you to transform your lives. We're here today to ask for an £80,000 investment in exchange for a 5% stake in our business. As someone that's leaned into wellness and journaling since I was a child, it's often struck me as to how many people don't take a pen to paper, set those big life goals and align their actions. I was one of those people. Then everything changed. In 2019, just two days after our honeymoon, I was diagnosed with leukaemia and given potentially just weeks to live. Those days were the toughest of our lives, but thankfully after a stem cell transplant, I've made a full recovery. But isn't it amazing when in a situation like that, all your goals and your priorities and what's important in your life really changes? We created the head plan because we believe it shouldn't take a catastrophic moment like this to really change your life. 
What started at our kitchen table with me designing our first guided journal has now grown to over 20 products and a thriving headplant community. Since 2020, we sold to over 50 countries through our website and we have a mobile app with over 35,000 users. Our motto is write it down and make it happen. So dragons, join us and let's make it happen today. Journals, wellness products, and an app which connects its community of followers and guides them through their self-development journey is the offering from Kieron Byrne and Denise Kenny Byrne. Under your seat, you'll find a selection of some of our best-selling products. I can't wait to have a look at these. The Life Coach Entrepreneurs are seeking £80,000 in exchange for 5% equity. Let's just see what we can manifest right now. Oh, la la, I trust my intuition. I am proud of how far I have come. Emma Greed is feeling inspired by the Dublin duo story. First of all, before we even start, I feel like we should say well done for taking such a negative moment in your life and turning it into something like this. So that's just unbelievably admirable. Thank you. Amazing. You OK? Yep, I'm good, yeah, thanks. You got emotional, of course yeah. you did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a big moment. We used to watch this in hospital. Yeah. <laughs> really? Here we are now, yeah. 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 You know, what I'm really interested to understand, because I think the product is superior. You leaf through it, you can feel there's so much thought and effort, but there's a lot of this product in the marketplace. Yeah. And so I really want to understand, like, what do you guys see as the key differentiators? What makes you stand out? Uh, you know, you know what? The truth is, our products are amazing, and they're amazing because Denise wrote the introductions and the feedback we get from people who are on their tent product. It's the nurturing sense of and, and the guidance that's in it. Because see, a lot of people, the key question they say is, "I don't know how to journal. How do I journal? Yeah. How do I set my goals?" And so, by leaning into that um, through our app, mm. and I think Denise has done an amazing job at, at capturing the tone of that. You launched in 2020. Yes. yes. Um, can you give me just an overview of the, the revenue yeah. and the profit since then? Yeah, so 2020, uh, 480 uh, turnover, 269 net profit. 269, yeah. 2021, uh, 944 uh, turnover yep. and 123 net. And last year, turnover 1.1 1 .1, uh, million and 166 net. That's unreal. Did you write that in your journal? Yeah. yeah. I mean, to, to start a business and to generate three million pounds is absolutely amazing. You'll have them crying again. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've got to say, well done. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Can we zoom in then? This digital content business, yeah. which I see as the road to, you know, the yeah. moon. Mm. Do you manage the software part of this business? The d development of the app? No, so, so the app we actually uh, just invest in a white label app, but part of our plans, we're going to build out um, our own app and subscription business. How much work have you done to develop the software, the content, yeah. any of that yeah. sort of stuff? In terms of our plan, we're still in the early stages of designing that app. Denise has been working on um, the workbook behind the head plan method, and it explains how to go about um, reflecting first, then setting your goals, and the plan is to take that workbook and digitise aspects of that. Mm. And so we'll be bringing the workbook to market as a physical product and then scan a QR code to get the course. Yeah. You go online then and we'll be feeding different pieces of the course. Yeah. I have to say, it is, a big, it is a big jump, right, from the analogue to the digital. They're, they're two very, very different businesses. They are, yeah. You know, with My Diary, we had yeah. uh, every week you scan the QR yeah. code, it yeah. takes you to the online. Very, very different, difficult business versus yeah. the analogue. It is. So, yeah. um, I think we have to give credit to the, the leap that one has to take yeah. to go from a diary and, to a and, tech platform. Yeah. I need to think. What are you thinking about? Are you going to make an offer? Maybe, we'll see. Guys, I want to make this a little bit easier for you. I'm going to clear the decks here. I think you two are beyond impressive. You're the living, breathing embodiment of everything that you're selling to us here. Your numbers are amazing. You're killing it right now. That business is coming from selling this paper product. The issue that I have right now is that what you're talking about scaling is the digital product. Mm -hmm. And actually, the digital product, you haven't figured out how to monetize yet. 
So for me, there's a little bit of a disconnect between what I'm looking at and the future of this business. And I don't think you've really quite worked out how are you scaling this? And that's where I'm finding a bit of a rub and an issue right now. So I'm out, but I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Denise, Kieran, this is a space that I know very little about, but I think they're absolutely right to question and poke at the whole, how is this business model going to change and what is it that you're going to sell online? And I'm not sure I'm the one that can unlock that problem. Sure. So I'm going to wish you all the best, but I won't be investing today, so I'm out. So, I know this business very well, I'm in this business, and I also know the, the leap you have to take to get from where you are now to a business that is incredibly scalable so that everyone in every corner of the world can be part of that community. And I think I sat here and I asked the same question over and over again about how we get there. And I don't have a huge amount of conviction on that. And so I'm gonna say that I'm out. Denise, Kieran, this is going to shock you, but 40 years ago, I decided to start my first business. You, look, you need to look surprised, by the way. <laughs> oh, my God, you look so young. It can't possibly be. That's Thanks, Emma. <laughs> so you go, oh, great. We so need new blood in the dead. <laughs> no, so when I did that, I used to create my own lists of things that I wanted. And this is no joke, every single year for 40 years, I've created what I want to do for the next year. And it's all of the things that, A, things that I want to do and things that I want to change. So I, I get it. Oh, thank you, Peter. But I think I am sitting here and I can't agree more with, Can with, I that? with Steve and, and, and Emma about the digital side of this. Mm. Mm. So but go back to this, how, do you, how are you going to be able to do this? You, yeah. You're capable of, of wireframing this out yeah, and really 100%. delivering it. I've been a software developer actually all my life. When I finished college, I set up my first software business, building uh, social communities long before anyone had heard of iPhones or Facebook or things like that. I believe I've got a, a talent in building this stuff there. Right, Kieran, it, enough, I've heard enough. I'm, I'm, I'm making you an offer. Okay. You oh. are, okay, yeah. right, because I think you are absolutely brilliant. I think you've been on a massive life journey yourselves, and I think you're about to go on a huge life journey with massive pitfalls. But I want to be there by your side. Already. And I'm going to offer you all of the money, and I'm going to go low. I'm going to do it just for 10%. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Have we got a deal? Let's take a deep breath and let's be rude not to let other people talk. Every now and then, you just come across a really, two really good people with a really good business. And that's what I think we've got standing in front of us. And I would love to go on this journey with you. So I too am going to offer you all of the money. <laughs> There's nothing written down. And I'll wait. <laughs> no, I know, I don't need to. And I want 8% of the business. Oy, 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 oy. Oh. What's 2% between oh. friends? <laughs> I don't know, I'd want to be in your two shoes right now. This is too much for me, so I don't okay. understand how you two are coping right now. It's a little much, isn't it? Denise and Kieran. Yes. Right. Um... Oh, God. <laughs> the oh. pause. <laughs> the pause. OK. I've got a very similar business. And I'm just thinking, is it a, a conflict or, or could there be a synergy? And I, I guess, I guess unless I make you an offer, I won't really know. <laughs> you know? So, I'm going to make you an offer for all of the money. That's £80,000 for 10%. However, if I get my money back within 12 months, I drop it down to 7%. Ooh, undercut. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk to the wall? The entrepreneurs have three competing offers to consider, with Peter Jones looking for 10% equity. I, I think they wrote my name in their journal. Oh, yeah, manifested, yeah. Manifested, yeah. 
possibly. Deborah Meaden wants 8%, whilst Tuka Suleiman has proposed 10%, dropping to 7 once he's been repaid. I just keep it simple, OK? I just go, like, give, give me a bit of meat on the bone, you know? So, Dragons, um, thank you for all the kind offers. Um, and I think, you know, we're huge fans of each and every one of you and the value that you bring. Um, and Deborah, we're a huge fan of yourself and Peter. You know, for us, we're fans of just keeping it simple. We think that it's a fair uh, deal just to, you know, keep it at a, at a very straightforward um, arrangement. So. If it's okay, we'd like to go with yourself, Peter, and take the deal. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'll give you a hand. <laughs> Success for Kieran and Denise. You've got to go now, because otherwise I'm going to cry. Yeah, thanks so much. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I can't wait to work with yeah, you. Yeah, thank you so hard. much. Yeah. yeah thank well you. Done. The duo depart the den with £80,000 and the backing of a dragon who's invested in more ways than one. Really help me. Mm. Brilliant. Beautiful. Beautiful pitch. Ah. Oh, dear. Oh, God. It's great. It's brilliant. This is the start of very big things for yeah. us to kind of make what you set out in paper a reality. It's, mm. it's, it's felt very, very special. I could, that meant a lot to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next time on Dragon's Den. Can you eat the envelope? Not yet. What has just happened? Maria, I'm the most important person in the room right now. Ignore him, <laughs> please. I really believe in you. Oh, this is brilliant. You've just got to say I accept your offer. I just don't know if I'm as barking mad as you are. You are literally so boring. I couldn't agree less with Peter. Oh, thank God for that. I'm serious about this.